Hey everyone, back with uh, another overdue uh, fish room update. Uh, there hasn't been a uh, little bit of change, and that's why I usually hold off again on the updates until there's something actually to update on. But uh, we'll quickly run through uh, what's new on some of the tanks. Everything's still the same here. Seleucii, Bucktooth Tetras. And this here, in the past I've been, uh, these are yellow convicts, but uh, I did read an article and I should be actually going by their scientific name, which is uh, Cryptoheros nanoteus, which is still commonly known as the yellow convict. But uh, the article that some might have read as well that by labeling them as yellow convicts, it uh, I guess it deters people from, you know, keeping them or breeding them or having any interest because some people have a, not such a good outlook on your common black and white uh, convicts, the, the common convict, because they're so popular, you know, they're certainly overbred. So uh, it sort of deters people from, so I should try to make a habit of. Uh, just strictly going by their scientific name and not labeling them as yellow convict. So it's uh, Cryptoheros nanoteus, if I'm pronouncing that right, as close as I can get. But uh, these are still, they bred once, these guys. I got these guys registered in the CARES program, as I mentioned, videos past. But uh, there are all, there's pairs forming up in there now, so I decided to. Uh, finally free up a, a 30 gallon tank for one pair and start try to get a bit serious on uh, spawning these guys and one thing I noticed about them um, they're very very shy you can uh, a lot of times you can't even approach the as you see here see but I removed a pair and put them in uh, this 30 gallon here only a couple of days ago so typical fashion there's the male in there females hiding as well but they haven't been very uh, fussy on the move but hopefully uh, with them separated now I can really condition them alone because I think in the main tank uh, they did spawn a couple of times various pairs but it's not really the conditions there's uh, 12 I think in total in there so it's not really conducive to uh, raising a brood of fry so I think if I separate the pair this is more of a control circumstance. So like I said, I thought I'd get more serious about breeding and putting a bigger effort. Uh, down here, I do believe in the last video I had the Pseudotrophius Seleucii fry in there. And as you see here, I still do, but this is a different batch. This is a couple of different uh, broods from uh, two different females that spit over the course of uh, last month or so. So as you know, I usually let the females spit on their own into a 10 gallon tank and then after a couple of days remove the female, grow them out a little bit, probably for a month in the 10 gallon and then they go in here into this 55. Then I'll show you where the other ones went shortly. Uh, this tank still got the reticulated oil with catfish in there and uh, one lone rescue neon tetra that I think actually have a home lined up for that they have a large plantic tank with a school of them still got the hump uh, humpback uh, lime is they're breeding pretty good like any uh, live barriers do uh, seeing there's one right here but also I think I'm gonna have to start removing some adults here making some space because I found that I'm not getting as much or as many fry there's probably there's a couple in there one right there but uh, I guess the predation from being more adults there is starting to cut down the numbers so I think I might take out you know probably half a dozen of the more mature fish and uh, grow them out in a separate tank and just let them keep spawning in here uh, news here on the really bad reflection no doubt um, these are the uh, red tailed goodyids that I've been waiting to spawn for months and months and months I, I think I might have these guys almost probably pushing a year 
And finally, uh, last month, they spawn, or well, I guess I shouldn't say spawn, but one of them, uh, one of the females gave birth to, I think, eight fry. The tank's a bit dark because I have this these floating uh, plastic plants in there. I'll see if I can get a, a sensible shot of a. Oh. But anyway, I was glad to see. I was uh, trying to be as patient as I can. Uh, you know, especially with live bears, there's really not much you can do. Just keep them fed and and keep them happy, and just wait for them to uh, drop. And I know they. Uh, their gestation period, I do believe, is upwards of 60 days, so I knew I'd had to wait some time, but it's been a long while, certainly over 60 days since I've had them. But hopefully now that, uh, you know, one female has dropped uh, a small brood of fry, hopefully now I'll start seeing more and more. I was tempted to separate them and grow them out in a 10 or a 5 and a half gallon, but uh, they've been doing well here. Uh, I usually just mix in some flake and some uh, when they were smaller, just some powdered flake, and they've been doing uh, well. They've grown out quite a bit, so I think I'll uh, I'll just leave them as is. But that's uh, that would make this the I guess third care species that I've bred. Uh, I'm not counting the Cryptoharis thanatoides because you know I didn't really grow out the fry. I only had a couple, and they didn't. Uh, they were too weak really to make it, so I'm not really counting them yet. Uh, another new in the fish room, as I probably said in one of the videos before, I'm, I want I was determined to try to breed a pleco species, but I didn't want I wanted to stay away from the bushy nose, uh, not because they're not nicer, but I just find they're done quite often, and the market here is somewhat flooded with them, and I wanted something a little bit more not impossible but more challenging and something that if I did breed them or win I guess I should say um, that I would be able to have an easier time uh, offloading the fry but in here I have uh, six uh, clown plecos and I think there's at least two females I couldn't really tell in the store about all six that were there and uh, grew them out or fed them up I should say for about a month or so and I when I transferred them from uh, actually this 30 gallon down here before I put the Crypto Harris in there uh, it looked to be two females for sure so I got uh, just some coconut huts there and some pipe and as you'll probably read a lot online that they tend to like most black goes uh, that are cave spawners they'll uh, only spawn in a cave that is capped off on the end so I think all but one of these PVC pipes here are capped off on the end. And I put one smaller one in there. I see these bigger ones. I think they're an inch and a half inside diameter, or one inch rather, and three quarter on the smaller one. And I thought maybe these might have been a little bit too big because I know that the male likes to be able to basically block off the entrance almost entirely so I thought well I throw one small one in there three quarter inches uh, inside diameter and just see if that's gonna be too big too small but uh, haven't seen much uh, activity I'm mean, they're doing well you know I'm they're uh, I got wood in there for them to scrape off of too because they're uh, wood eaters or I guess technically they're not wood eaters but they eat the biofilm off the wood and uh, cucumber zucchini frozen blood worms and stuff so they've been doing well so I guess it's just again like any breeding project it's a uh, just a game of uh, patience and over here in the 10 gallon next to it as you see some more uh, Pseudotrophius lucii fry these are younger again so this is like they were spit probably three weeks ago or maybe two and a half weeks ago actually um, so when they get a little bit bigger they will be heading over to this tank with some uh, of the previous generations once they get a little bit bigger and won't get picked on so probably within the next month see how these guys grow out and they'll be heading over there uh, down here we still have the Tatia Prue guy the oilwood catfish or the honeycomb catfish 
Uh, in the last video, this tank was more uh, aquascaped. It had sand, driftwood, and whatnot. But uh, again, I decided to try to get a bit more serious about breeding these guys because they've been spawning on regularly, but I haven't uh, really uh, had the window of opportunity to hatch out the the eggs. So I thought I'd give them more spawning uh, pipes there because I think there's three or four females in the group and uh, see if we can make a, a proper go out of Here's one here. But again, these are just the PVC uh, all capped off and I can vouch for this one. Uh, these definitely don't, I haven't seen any females spawn or rather uh, lay eggs in any, t any uh, pipes that weren't capped off. And it was only a few days ago that there were eggs in there, but they, I don't know if they weren't fertilized, they fungus quite quickly. But I've had, I have seen fry, say three or four week old fry, uh, darting around and they're over the, over the course since I've had them. So uh, hopefully now with these, with the more pipes in it, I should get more females dropping and maybe get more viable eggs. You can see one in their, in their usual hideout. And if you've seen any videos of these on any cha anyone's channel or posting, when you feed them, they go no trouble to see them. Then they come out full bore, so to speak. But these guys, I they're nocturnal, but I feed them uh, during the day, and they have no problem. Uh, they come out. But anyway, that's the that's the reason for the the aquascape change is to be a bit more geared for breeding, and hence also the bare bottom, which is a lot easier for maintenance, I guess. Up here, 75 gallon with the mascara barbs, and as you'll notice, I have uh, recently added, just gone through quarantine, our 10 uh, blind cave tetras. So, of course, this is not biologically sound in terms of a biotope with species, but the intention uh, for these blind cave tetras is a uh, a spawning project in the future. They're hard to actually, I know they're common, but here where I live, they're, they don't come around that often, and when they do, they're tiny, like half inch. Like they're basically still fry. So these uh, came in at a, a sensible size, probably an inch and a half, pushing two inches, some of them. Uh, even some a little bit more. So I figured I'd grow some of them out and uh, feed them up, you know, frozen foods and whatnot. And once they got to uh, a size, no doubt they're probably a mature size now, but with the sizing of it, it's hard to sex them. That might be a female there, there behind, according to her size. But uh, maybe in a couple of months after I grow them out a bit, fatten them up, so to speak, I'll probably separate a, a trio and um, put them in even a 10-gallon or something, just an egg-scattering uh, spawning setup. I usually go with... Uh, I find, I find marbles work okay, it's pretty basic, or also some, uh, I got black plastic mesh that I lay down for the eggs to drop through. So hopefully in the next update, depending on how quick I do it, which could be months the way I am, uh, these guys I might have some separated. Everything's uh, still the same with that tank. The 135, this is empty. I did have the pair of tilapia east coast small spot. But I actually I found a new home for them. Uh, they did spawn a couple of times, as you uh, heard in my videos. But uh, they sort of they stopped. They haven't they haven't spawned. I'd say in almost pushing a year. I would say in the next month or two. So I thought I'd free up this tank because I finally, after an eight-year search, although I still don't have them yet, but the blue whale catfish or the baby whale catfish also. Uh, uh, Cetopsis cuticudians. Now I might have butchered that pronunciation, but I've been after them for years and years. I finally uh, I'm getting close to getting it to get, uh, a group sourced. So I'm hoping if I ever do line up with them in this month, that's where they'll be going for now in this 135. So all this in this one is just a common pleco, just keeping the glass, just basically keeping the tank cycled. He's probably uh, right here, probably seven or eight inches, but I wanted to keep something in the tank just to keep it cycled, didn't want to lose that. And last but not least, it is the indoor pond, and this is where 
the other Seleucii fry went, as you can see them here. I've been calling it the Sea of Seleucii. And there's probably... There might be 50 fry in there. And even uh, I've noticed, before I even moved these in here from the 55 gallon, uh, there was a couple of females holding them. Now these guys are only, I would say the largest, probably an inch and a half. So they don't take long to uh, mature and start uh, start spawning. As you can see already, there's some uh, males already starting to show up. But yeah, so this is where I decided, I was pondering on, the, on this uh, indoor pond. It's 320-ish gallons, I think. And, you know, I was thinking about, you know, doing big fish and, and whatnot and so maybe some big catfish. But the trick with most, most big fish, really, is a lot of them are jumpers. And I don't have this covered, and I suppose there are options to cover, but I think it would take it away take away from the effect. I'll just step back a bit and see if we can get the whole the whole view. Just some uh, pot of tropical plants just from Walmart, Home Depot, Kent. You know, they're near disposable. If they're on sale, I'll buy them. If they, if they come around, perfect. Uh, the driftwood just got locally, just down on the near a pond. And these, this plant here that you see vining and all this here, this is a uh, pothos. And I also have a lot of that in my uh, in my other tanks, in my fry tanks, is I find they're uh, they're excellent for uh, keeping the water quality up. So really, my only plan for this, I, I my responsibility to breed and sort of took over, and I said I should use this pond as a fry grow out because all these forty or fifty Seleucii fry or sub adults soon now, I guess. Uh, they were in the 55, so it was getting, you know, cramped quarters. I want to grow them out quick, and then once they get to a sellable size, well, I guess they're sellable now, but I'd rather get them a little bit bigger and then start dispersing them, because they're a care species as well, so I'll just, uh, no, though they're not that hard to breed, but I like, you know, doing my part. Why not breed something that's uh, endangered in the wild? So once all the other fry start growing out, maybe once they even get uh, half this size, I'll, um, uh, I'll put them in here so it'll probably be upwards of you know pushing 70 or 80 fry and then typically of all the Seleucii over here the adults they're always spawning so uh, there's no females holding there now I thought there was one I was getting geared up to the separator but upon further investigation it didn't really look like she was holding but what I do in case they are holding and I'm because uh, if I'm gone away to work for three weeks at a time uh, and I miss one. That's why I got these uh, river stones and just some plastic plant in there, just in case they spit. You know, you're not going to get all the fry survive as you would if it, in a separate 10 gallon or, or whatnot. But you will get a couple. So if I come home from work, notice there's a couple of small fry darting in and out. I'll uh, when I'm doing a water change, I'll usually uh, scoop a, scoop the fry out and then put them in a 10 gallon and, and grow them out, right? So that's where these guys are destined for, probably probably in a month's time, see how these guys grow out, I'll uh, they'll be going into the, into the indoor pond. Other than that, uh, that's it uh, for future plans here, I guess like any fisherman would be more tanks. I got to uh, fill out this rack here, I mean it's designed, it should be able to hold probably 5 to 6 10 gallons on the end as you see two of them there, across, and same with down here, now that 20 gallons there, but as you see there's some, uh, these tanks here, there's a 10, there's a couple of 5 and a half. these are empty, because I usually only set them up when I'm removing, uh, well a Seleucii female that's holding, and as you'll notice in these here, you'll see uh, each of them have an internal filter as well as an aquaclear hang on back. These internal filters, I use them for the for these here, so I just keep them here in the meantime to keep them cycled, of course, and some added filtration for the tanks that are currently in. But the reason why I'm holding off on more breeding projects, not that I don't have enough, I guess, is um, 
I want to get some like central air system set up. I I got to purchase a an air pump, a sizable one. Almost I want to oversize it so there's some room for expansion in case I ever do like a rack here in the center of the floor or you know against another wall because it's getting uh, it's getting harder and harder of course as more tanks more lights more filters heaters to get you know find the proper plugs I don't want to oversize the uh, or I don't want to overload the circuit they're on 15 amp circuits two separate circuits so I might have to add I got lots of space on my panel so I'm thinking about adding maybe a couple of 20 amp circuits and I'll use that for the air pump but again if I get an air pump a centralized uh, system uh, I'll run the conduit along the ceiling as you see in a lot of fish rooms all along here might put it over here in this corner on a shelf maybe up right here somewhere hard pipe it right around and just have uh, as you see valves and just drop lines into uh, each tank and also it's mostly for like these 10 gallon racks that in that case I would probably only run sponge filters in them if I had a more uh, a larger air system right now there's just a couple of air pumps there that I just use for additional air tration well that would be the future maybe in the next update I will see unless something new spawns or I get some new fish or whatever but uh, I'm hoping in the next couple months I round up an air pump and um, run the lines. Shouldn't be too big of a project. It should go quick enough if I just I just gotta commit to getting the air pump and then go from there. Uh, I've had uh, questions in the past about what I feed uh, the fish room, and uh, I'm simple when it comes to that. The only thing I use is. Um, well, frozen brine shrimp, frozen blood worms, live baby brine shrimp. Uh, of course, not to every tank. I avoid giving a lot of the frozen blood worms to the Seleucii. Like, I don't want to give them very high protein or anything. Um, but in terms of flake and stuff, just this Nutrafin Basics. Now, it is, and this is where I simplify it, uh, and I know there's lots of naysayers and, uh, you know, people that would argue and some people that wouldn't. Uh, but this cichlid food, uh, the cichlid food variety of the Nutrafin, that's what I give all these tanks. So the cichlids, tetras, log bears, barbs, uh, catfish, whatever I'll eat them, I just use this, uh, just that flake, and that's it. And also, less in regards to flake, but uh, these bug bites, uh, these are the small. I use them quite a bit, and again, I feed them to the whole fish room as well. So, even though I got a lot of species, you know, from different parts of the world, different demands, I haven't had any issues feeding that uh, regimen, other than staying away from the high, high protein stuff like blood worms, uh, you know, any beef heart mixtures, and uh, keeping them away from the, the Seleucii, especially. And, uh, and in terms of live food, under the live baby brine, which goes to any of the fry, that would mean those tanks here, um, would be, I give the bucktooth tetras mostly, uh, mealworms, and uh, chopped up uh, earthworms. I try, I've tried the mealworms on other tanks here, but most of the fish aren't really big enough to handle the mealworms, the same with the earthworms, and they're not as aggressive enough. The barbs have tried the mealworms but they're not really keen on them and I actually I thought that the catfish the oilwood catfish or the honeycomb or tatia prugai that's in here and the reticulated oilwood catfish which is, is almost identical other than the pattern that's in here I thought they would be keen to go after the worms and whatnot but uh, no they've they've certainly it gets in their mouth but they don't they, they spit it out they don't really uh, they don't really take to it so other than try to risk polluting the tank too much I, I've sort of ceased on that but so in regards to most live stuff live foods is going to these uh, buck to tetras which I think these guys are the longest in the fish room I've had these even before the fish room began all the other fish I think I've already I only got since uh, we built the new house and the new fish room 
But these guys, I think... I've had, I've had, I must have them at least five years now. And what is shocking, and I, I'm disappointed myself, but I still haven't spawned these, and it's, but I'm guilty in that the effort hasn't been put in over the past five years or whatnot since I've had them. I have removed a female and two males and, and a couple of different uh, trios and tried them, but never really set up a proper tank form because the spawning tank like a 10 gallon which normally I use for like egg scatters like Daniels and stuff um, you know is, is good because it's easy to control but these guys are you know they're quite large and boisterous like you know if they're their prime candidates are jumping out of tank especially if they're too small so I think I'll, I'll have to get uh, you know a 40 breeder might even be a bit too big I find trying to breed a egg scatterers in a large tank, it's a job to track down fry even after they've laid uh, laid the eggs. So maybe one of these 30 gallons, if I ever free up the space, you know, one of those racks there, we'll see. Or maybe I'll build another rack. But I have to get on the go with that. And uh, that's it. Let me think. Oh, I was going to mention about the water parameters. I had a couple of questions what my water parameters do. Do I? Uh, you know, with the different species, any different water parameter requirements, do I change them? I do have an RODI unit, but I, I hasn't even been out of the box yet. But my, uh, I'm on an artesian well, so I don't have to worry about chlorine or anything uh, here. But uh, the KH is 120. Now these are with strips, so you have to give or take. Uh, the pH is around 7.6, and the total hardness is 150. So the P, you know, typical well water, artesian well water in my area, you know, it is hard, is a little bit of a higher pH, but in the meantime, which well of course are, you know, it's it's good for the cichlids, uh, there's no doubt. But I've spawned uh, ember tetras, black neons, and silver tip tetras in this water as well, uh, without changing anything, you know, haven't been fussing with tannins or anything like that. So, uh, I think mostly with the water parameters, I'm no expert, but I think consistency, you know, if it's stable, uh, you should have success while keeping them for sure, but I think if something's spawning, it's probably the happiest it's going to get. Now, I know there might be some to argue that. Now, if I were to try to tackle maybe discus in the future, or some, you know, some really soft water stuff, uh, maybe some more uh, fussier tetras that I haven't been captive bred as much, I would probably have to start in at using the RODI unit, which is what I got it for. Or also, I also got it into to tempt me to maybe go salt water. Not not completely, just maybe one or two salt water tanks. But we'll have to see about that. That's still on the board of debate. But anyway, guys, that's it for the update. Thanks for watching, and hopefully in the next little while. I said that last time, and it was a few months. Uh, I'll be able to give you an update. Hopefully, these uh, in this empty 135 gallon, with the exception of a common pleco, there will be uh, your Cetopsis uh, cuticudians, the blue whale catfish or blue torpedo catfish, go by many names, are in there. Maybe I'll have an air pump set up. But that's it, that's it and I'll uh, see you on the next update.